Hey everybody, um, in this tutorial we're going to make this kind of funky like uh, image distortion effect should pick up my hand. Um, I don't know why this is working, but it, it uses, there we go, it uses um, uh, person segmentation mask. Um, you don't have to do that, but I just thought it was cool way to like separate the effect from the background. Um, so, uh, this is pretty simple. It just uses like a single image texture, which is like a noise pattern. Um, you can generate this online pretty easily. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, let's see, Firefox. Uh, so I just Googled, um, Perlin noise generator. Um, the important part is that it will be tileable because we want the noise to repeat. Um, so we don't have to have like a giant image. We can generate this pretty small image and repeat it and use it for a whole project. Um, and it'll look seamless. And, uh, as usual, um, I appreciate all of my sponsors. There's 16 of them now. That's pretty impressive. Uh, if you have a few dollars to give me, um, I'd really appreciate it. My goal is to do this, uh, part-time. So like 20 hours a week. Um, I really enjoy making tools for you guys, and uh, yeah. So this project, nothing there right now, uh, will also be up on GitHub. They can grab it pretty quickly and like poke around uh, without having to go through the whole tutorial necessarily, although I hope you will. Uh, I think you'll learn more that way. Um, let's see. So... I already downloaded this noise texture. Um, I'm gonna pretty much disconnect all of this stuff and like start from scratch. Um, this is kind of like a two tutorials in one. So I'm gonna go over how texture coordinates work and how you can manipulate them um, to like offset and scale the texture to your liking. Um, it might sound scary, but it's really not that complicated. Um, and explain all of that and then eventually uh we do some animation and like other stuff and it goes into this texture distortion shader um this is part of the new spark library so if you go into it's already in the project but i i just wanted to show you guys how to get to it if you go into patch assets and then shaders um it's down here uh yeah so I guess um, step one, where do we start? I'm gonna pull this off and just grab our noise. Um, so step one, we wanna we wanna control um, the UVs on this. So to do that, we're going to grab a texture sampler, and the noise is going to go into there, and then we're going to grab a vertex attribute, which will be our texture coordinates. So if you just use these two things like out of the box, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be the same texture, um, but you can add steps here to kind of modify that texture. So if we multiply it, that's gonna change the scale of the texture. So just a quick demo. Like immediately you'll see that it's not repeating. It's just like getting clipped on the edges. Um, but yeah, multiplication is how you change scale. Lower um, will scale the texture up and higher will scale, scale the texture down, which it's kind of like counterintuitive to how you would think it would work, but um, yeah, just, just play with the numbers um, and you'll see. So I guess we should address this like weird clipping issue, um, which can just be done with one patch. It's like super simple. Um, modulo, what it does is when, when this value gets to one, it will wrap back around to zero. So if it's 1.1, .1, it will be 0.1. Um, 
And the way textures work, they always go from uh, zero to one. So if we want it to repeat, we will just throw a modulo in and boom, we get a repeating texture. Oh, well, maybe that's not exactly what I wanted to do. It's something along those lines. This is why I didn't delete everything immediately. Oh, maybe fragment stage. Multiply it and add then module. Huh. Well, go ahead with the, uh, the addition. We'll add the module back in later. Um, so what adding is going to do is it's going to offset the texture. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it's doing. Um because we're we're offsetting by a number, it's it's like x and y, but if we change this to vector two, um it'll be more clear. Yeah. So y axis and then x axis. Um so we'll use this, we'll put a runtime value into there and animate it. Um, I guess I'll add the modulo after this, because that's what I did last time. Seemed to work. Okay, but maybe we need fragment stage. Yeah, okay. Um, so fragment stage, uh, I don't totally understand it, but um, it's generally used for like image processing stuff. So if you if your stuff is like weird and blurry for some reason, just try adding this um, to like texture samplers. Sometimes solve some stuff. Um, so now, yeah, now it's working much better. Uh, we can offset the texture, and the modulo keeps it um, repeating. So. Yeah, that's cool. I know this is like a little bit roundabout because um, it, it's not looking anything like the, the final effect at this point. Um, but trust me, we'll get there. Um, so we're gonna use runtime just as a way, you could probably use like an animation patch, but runtime is like the amount of time that's elapsed since uh, the effect has been started and you can use that to drive animations as well. Um, it's pretty simple and lightweight. Um, so I'm just going to add a multiply into that. And I'll explain that in a second. So now you can see we're offsetting the, um, we're, we're offsetting the offset. Uh, so now it's, now it's animated. Um, and this multiplication will basically control the speed. So we, we don't want anything too crazy. So like 0 0.01 is fine. Now to get that crazy kind of like wobbly noise thing, we're actually, we're just going to use the same image. Um, so we're going to get a second texture sampler and we're going to change the offset. Um, and then we're going to blend it together. So we'll need a modulo on that too. Um, but instead of this, we're going to change, uh, I think we can just multiply it by negative one and that'll be like the opposite direction. Let's see what that does. Oh, I have to connect texture UV. Yeah, okay, so that's the opposite direction, but um, maybe that could work. We'll, we'll try it. So pretty much when you have these two um, things that are animating in opposite directions, we're gonna use a blend mode, it's similar to blend modes in Photoshop. Um, you've got the top layer, which is the source, and then the destination, which is the bottom layer. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna subtract these two and then you get kind of this like crazy wobbly effect. Um, 
what is this multiply? This is, I'm just going to name these so we can keep track of what is happening. This is speed. Or maybe we'll go larger with this. I think that looks pretty cool. Kind of looks like um, have like a ambient waves. So I'm gonna note there's like one weird thing that happens here. Uh, you can see it kind of like blink out. I don't know what's happening to cause that. So if you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> uh, but for now, it's just kind of like a weird side effect. Um, so, yeah, after we get this blend, um, we can do a couple of things just to control um, the, the look of the noise. Uh, so I'm going to grab closure. Um, this is a patch from my color, what is it called? Color adjustment repository. So I'll leave a link to this in the uh, description of the video. You can see that the exposure just like brightens up the image. You can get like pretty crisp, like hard lines that way if you want. Um, we'll probably stay like in this range. And then uh, uh, what else? Contrast. Yeah, so similar. Um, this is also a patch from the color adjustment repository. Surprised these aren't like default, like built in things, but I don't know. So, contrast is, is gonna like make blacks blacker and make whites whiter. So, you can, oh, you can go backwards. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I guess that's a, an easy way to like reverse out the image. Cool trick. Um, and then we're going to grab this texture distortion shader. So the texture is going to be, I mean, it would be like this person segmentation thing. I guess I can just copy that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to pipe this in here. Um, you can see it's like just the segmentation of me. Let's take an alpha from the mask texture and then combining it with the camera. And then you get a nice cutout. So we'll put that into the texture. And then the distortion texture is going to be this like weird noise thing that we made. And then you're going to put the output into there. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, but it's like kind of misaligned. Um, one thing I noticed is that, wait a minute. Yeah, so the contrast will like control kind of this offset. Maybe exposure does a little bit too. So, I mean, just play with the numbers until you get something that you want. Maybe you want something like super crazy, just like ambient weirdness could be cool um so those are the basics what else was i doing i guess nothing else really but uh i want to note these are are pretty cool like the stuff from the library is cooler than the built-in stuff in a way because you can actually dig into it and like see what's happening so a little bit out of whack. Okay, so there's like a couple of, I didn't write this, so I don't know exactly what the author was thinking, but um, this fallback thing is pretty cool. Like if you don't have a, a texture that's like uh, piped in, it will like fall back to just using black um, and that'll like prevent errors. So if you're like writing your own patch groups for reusable, reusability, this is a pretty cool patch. Um, but as far as the effect goes, like these values seem kind of arbitrary to me. Um, so like you'll notice that the, the effect kind of has this like diagonal 
Um, and that comes from these values, I think. Oops. Yeah, so you can change the direction of the offset in here. So like you could you could expose like an input um, that goes into this so you could control it externally. Um, so that's one another way you can control alignment. And then this is like kind of the, the strength of the effect overall. Which also um, has an effect on the alignment. So I'll just put this back in native one. Um, is there anything else? I mean, yeah, okay. There is more stuff. More options. So I did subtract here. Um, they, like all of these can do like pretty cool stuff potentially. Way more subtle wobbliness um, difference. Uh, it's a little hard to see sometimes, so like, don't be afraid to to like reconnect old inputs when you're further down the line. Um, this is good for for debugging. Burn. Ooh. Let's put some. Exposure on that? That doesn't do anything. Contrast? I don't know, it's a mystery. Huh. Min is a uh, very strange overlay. They can get like a number of effects just like through this blend mode. And um of course, like we're just using two textures here. You could you could chain together a bunch of them. Just gonna go through these and like see what they do. I don't know why. They, oh, that's why I'm not connected to the right output. Okay, now yeah, now I've screwed up these values. So yeah, there's like a lot of um, possibilities with this, a lot of different noise techniques. You can make clouds and lightning and water and um, wobbly faces. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed and uh, I'll see you on the next one.